You know the scene in the story? The point where all hope is gone, when the dream is dead? The battle is lost, and our hero lies motionless on the ground. And for a moment, all is silent. We are numb with fear, overcome with despair. The enemy is closing in, and there is no way out. No escape, no hope left. Or so it seems. And then it happens. Someone shouts and points, and we all stand still, watching but not believing. A flicker of eyelids, a shudder of fingers, a rise of the chest. The impossible has happened. Our hero rises. Death is defeated. The tide has turned. This is not the stuff of legend. This is the story of God. And because he lives, all things are made new. All wrongs can be made right. He came alive, and he invites us to come alive with him. Amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. He's risen. Amen. He didn't rise today. He's been alive. Amen. Amen. Welcome to the most wonderful celebration of the year, I believe. You know, his birth is important, but his conquering death is what sets it all apart. See, we celebrate together the power of the resurrected Christ. Amen. Amen. More than 2,000 years ago. Think about this. More than 2,000 years ago, God's plan of redemption altered the world forever without a shadow of a doubt. The power of sin, the power of death was broken through the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. Death was defeated. Amen? Amen? True life, true spiritual life. God's life triumphed over everything. God didn't have to go back and destroy all the living people through, through a flood again or anything like that. He did it through his son, Jesus. See, today, is, if you've been with us the past couple Sundays, this is a culmination of our journey that we've been taking together, uh, covering the events of the Holy Week. You know, we started with Palm Sunday, if you remember. about coming alive to Jesus, which was above, beyond all human understanding. Then on Good Friday, we talked about not to look down in fear because of him dying on the cross, but we should be looking up to the cross in anticipation of what's to come, in anticipation of his sacrifice. But most importantly, today, we celebrate that Jesus is alive. Amen. Amen. And through his resurrection, through his resurrection, we come alive to the power that he gives us to change our lives, to transform. We each have the opportunity to become a new creation. Now, you know what, you may, you may sit, be sitting back and you might be thinking that, well, you know what, I, I, I don't know if I have the power to change. I don't know if I, if I have the power to change my attitude or my outlook on life. You know, sometimes we get a pretty sour attitude. You may think, sit back and think, well, you know what, I don't know if I have the, to continue in a marriage that I'm in. Or you don't know if you have the ability to break an addiction. Maybe you don't know if you have, have the power, and this is a hard one, to love your enemies. Maybe you don't know if you have the power to live that the life maybe that Christ is calling you into. The, the way he wants you to live today. 
You may just simply sit back and say, you know what, I just don't know if I have the power to change my life. But see, here's, what, here's the good news. This is what's important today is you don't have the power. Yeah, you weren't expecting that, were you? See, you don't have the power to change or transform your life. You don't have the power to become a new creation. You don't have the power to live the life that Jesus is calling to live. And that is because we need a Savior today. Yeah. And see, that's the good news of Easter. It's not about the Easter bunny. It's not about dropping Easter eggs from helicopters so all the kids can go out in the park and pick them up. Yeah, a church did that. Here in St. Charles, they dropped like a thousand eggs from a helicopter for kids to go, I hope they hit the target. <laughs> but it's cool. It, it, it was with one of our sister churches, and that's cool, you know. They're, they're, they're getting the kids involved. But see, you sit back, and you're probably wondering today, even if you're watching online, you may be wondering, is how in the world is that good news? Why is it good news? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth in the flesh. See, he created man because he wanted to have a relationship. But see, we messed it up. Amen? We messed it up. But he came to flesh to live among us, to show us how to live. And we messed it up. But what did he do in the end? He loved us so incredibly, beyond comparison, that, that he died on a cross. A cross that was meant for us. And when he did this, he defeated the power and this over sin. He defeated death by raising again in three days. We all know the story. Mary, Mary went down to the tomb, right? And the stone was rolled away. And it was empty. It was an empty tomb. But there was somebody there and said, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? See, Mary didn't recognize who it was, didn't recognize that it was Jesus. But because of the resurrection today, every person who, who has received Christ as their personal Lord and Savior now has the power of, guess who? You have the power of God inside of you. It's something special. Because of that, now you have the ability to change your life. You have, through the power of God living inside of you, to reach out and touch other people and change their lives by sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And see, that's what Easter is all about. You know, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, we all know who Apostle Paul was, man. He used to be Saul, hated, hated Christians, man. He wanted to destroy Christianity. He didn't want anything to do with that until he had his encounter with Jesus. But the Apostle Paul, a man who, who just persecuted Christians, made their lives miserable, didn't he? He had that encounter. He had that encounter. And after that, he knew that his life now depended on Jesus and the power of the resurrection. See, this is what he tells us in the book of Philippians 3.10. He says, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in death. See, that was the goal of Paul's life. He wanted to know Jesus. He wanted to know the power that he had. 
through his resurrection. See, Paul's ability to get through every day was dependent on Jesus and his power living through him. You know, Paul was probably one of the most persecuted Christians out there. He was. He was imprisoned multiple times. He was hungry, he, you know, he, he was in starvation. Constantly persecuted. But see, Paul wanted the same thing so badly for his friends as well. That's why he held out. He wanted other people to feel and know what he, through Christ, was experiencing. So I want you to listen to how he prayed for his friends in the church of Ephesus. He said, he said this in the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, 19 and 20. He says, and it is comparably great power for us to believe that the power is the same as the mighty strength. He exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at, the Christ, at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Think about this. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead gave Paul the ability to, and the authority to rule over the universe to you and me. Jesus said before he went to the cross, the things that you've seen me do, that you can do, but even greater. But sometimes we fail not to act on that. We lose that and don't we don't keep it in our forefront. See, the Greek word for power is dynamis. That's where the word dynamite comes from. So see, to have the power of the resurrection in your life is to have dynamite power, explosive power. You see, the apostle Paul said, I want to know it, give me a piece of that. Give it to me. Impart it on me. He said it's his goal in life to know Christ and to know the power of the resurrection. So he prayed that we would know that as well. That we could gain that experience as well. To gain, we'll call it a fringe benefit. Think about it that way. We get a fringe benefit by being children of the Most High God. See, the good news of Easter is that Jesus Christ not only died for your sins and offering you forgiveness of them, casting them as far as the east is from the west, but the good news of Easter is also that the power that raised him from the grave 2,000 years ago is available to change your lives today. Think about that. And we need that because, you know what? I'm not, can I be honest? Some of us are mediocre Christians. Some of us are just Christians depending on how the wind blows. We don't sit back and take the full power of the cross and the full power of the re resurrection and use it to our benefit. So what is resurrection power? Ready for this? Resurrection power is the power to cancel out your past, present, and future sins. How about that? Hear me. It is the power to cancel out your past, what you did before. It is the power to cancel out the present, what you're doing now. And guess what? It is the power to, ca to cancel out what you do in the future. See, so many people walk around through life carrying uh, the, 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 the weight and the burden of their past failures. Our past mistakes. Guess what? Our past sins. I know that. I've been there. 
See, I went through a period in life when I walked around and I didn't think I was worthy of the air that I breathed. And I'm sure there's many other people out there like that today. I didn't think I was worthy of it. And here's the issue. If we allow that to engulf us. We allow it to overwhelm us. We sit around and regret our past. I went through a phase of life where um, I, I sat there and I, you know, I'm like, if I died today, what difference did I make? If I died today, what difference? You ever thought that before? You ever thought about what kind of, what kind of legacy you're going to leave behind? You ever thought about that? But here's what's important. See, when I say cancel out your past, I'm not talking about denying your past. I'm not talking about saying it never happened because we know it happened. We know our past happened. But I'm saying cancel means to eliminate, to remove, and completely delete it. Do I have any do-it-yourselfers? Any do it DIYers? Got some DIYers? Have you ever gotten, through, gotten involved in a project and got like halfway through that project and you sit back and say, you know what? I wish I could start all over again. I see some hands, boy, you're just going all over the place. <laughs> I remember I was building something one time. I forgot, I forgot what it was. It was going to be like a, a letter holder or something like that. And I got like halfway through it and I sat back, <laughs> my wife shaking her head. And I got back and I looked at it like, what in the world is this thing? <laughs> it looked more like a birdhouse. <laughs> she, she's laughing because she remembers about it. <laughs> it's still sitting down in the basement. Just so I can look at it and you know, it reminds me, like, what did you try to do? <laughs> but we sat back. We get halfway through something. And then we start thinking, this is just not turning out the way I expected it. The way I planned. You ever been there, amen? amen. A lot of people feel that way about life. I feel a lot of phone calls. I should say I field a lot of phone calls in the past three years that I've been ministering from people saying, Pastor, I just, I don't see a reason to keep going. With our outreach on the streets, we've lost friends on the streets. Some of them because of the simple fact of uh, they just didn't see a reason to keep going. They weren't thinking about the impact that it was going to have on people around them. People that we know from outreach, they're, they're, some of you are here today, you guys are like family to us. We know you by name. We love you. We care about you. But when you go, when, when, when you give up, it's devastating to us. Me as a pastor, it sometimes it, it hits me and makes me feel like, Pastor, where did I go wrong? What, what, did I miss the mark? You know, we go out and we, do, do, we try to do great things for the people who not are necessarily living on the streets, but they have a house. They're just struggling from day to day. And that's okay. And it's cool that we go out there and we give them a nice warm, hot meal. And it's cool that we have clothing for him and toiletries and things like that. That's great. But see, to me, in my eyes, what's important to me is they hear about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Because all this stuff that we have out there, guess what? When you come to the end of this life, as you know it today, it's not going with you.
And sometimes it made me feel like, oh, could I start over? What could I have done differently? When we would lose one of our friends on the streets, it would make me, at least make me feel back like I failed. Maybe I made bad decisions. Maybe you feel that way too. Sometimes it made me want to look for that do-over button. You ever seen the commercial about the do-over button? I just wish I could hit that do-over button and go back. But see, here's the truth of the matter. Is some people, they just... You, People, I, I know you guys struggle. It's hard for you to let go of your past. But here's where the problem lies is we allow our past to control our present. Amen? Amen. Come on. We allow our past, we allow the things that we did before control what we do today. It causes us to continually second guess ourselves. Because we allow the, the tortured memories and the things of that past We keep putting it to the front of us. We allow it to think, make us think that we're not worthy of anything more than that. I'm good. I got good news. Can I give you some good news now? God says, hear me now, God says that's unnecessary. God says that you don't have to walk around with a heavy load of guilt. Follow me now. You don't have to walk around with a heavy load of old hurts. You don't have to walk around with a heavy load of painful memories. I'm looking at these stares at me right now. You're going, what? What did I miss? How can that be? Let me share something with you. I want you to listen for a moment to what happened as a result of death and resurrection in Jesus. And this is what Paul said again. It says in Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all your sins. That was, I heard a ding. That was kind of... At the right spot. Ding. <laughs> Paul said, having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, in other words, canceling what we did in the past, which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it, guess what? To the cross. In other words, his dying on the cross canceled out your past, everything that you did before by nailing it to the cross. When he died on that cross is the day that he sat there and he took your sins. He took your burdens, he took your problems, he took all your issues. The charges against you were canceled. The wife and I watched a movie last night on Pure Flix called The Two Thieves. It was written by the same guy that did, did the, the Chosen series. And there was a portrayal about one guy that was on the cross and how he, he was, he put it in, his, in these words, I was a good Jew. I read the Torah. And his other one, the guy, the friend that also went to the cross where they were friends uh, growing up together, and the guy, you know, he hated the Romans. So what he did, he went around, he robbed the Romans. And one day, apparently the, 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 the good Jew had an issue and he was mad 
about something that happened to him. So he went with his friend to go rob a house, and guess what? They got caught. And they were put on the cross with Jesus. And the good Jew sat there. He became so bitter because of what happened in his past. But the guy that was already a thief, he changed. And we know the story. That thief sat there and was hanging on the cross with Jesus, one on each side of him. He looked at Jesus and he said, remember me. This day, can you remember me? And what did Jesus respond? This day, you will be with me where? In paradise. His issue, because he asked for forgiveness, his debt was canceled. The verse I just read you says that he forgave all of our sins. What sin? Sin is an archery term, believe it or not. Did you know that? Sin's an archery term. It's bows and arrows. See, the sin doesn't mean to shoot and miss the target with our lives. It means to turn our backs and shoot in every direction except at the target. See, we at times completely ignore the true target of, pay, of, uh, of um, pleasing God. And so what do we do? We set our own sights on seductive targets that don't save us, but they satisfy us. Satisfy us. Our hang-ups, our addictions, so on and so on and so on. And guess what? We don't get anything out of that other than we feel miserable. Amen? We feel empty. I remember those, those days. I didn't feel like I, was, I had nothing. Been there, done that. But again, here's the good news. God offers complete forgiveness. He says that all the charges against us have been canceled out. gives them all not just a select few he, that day that you sit down before and you sit down and say I'm a sinner forgive me my sin guess what everything that you have done in your pants at that moment was, has been cancelled scripture says that your sins are cast as far as what the east is from the west that's a straight line never comes back together never joins again Scripture says it blots out. Blots out your sins. But see, that doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't know the sins that you've committed. He knows. But it doesn't mean that he comes and he rubs, your, rubs them in your face either. Once you ask for forgiveness and you, those sins are blotted out there, those sins are canceled out, he doesn't come back long sometime later on and say, Josh, guess what, man? You remember doing this and you're doing it again. He doesn't say, he doesn't, he doesn't, <laughs> hear me now, he doesn't do that. Women do that. Women, yeah, women. <laughs> uh, you know what, I, I need to get a drink after that comment. <laughs> Today, we're advertising Dr. Pepper. <laughs> right. That's correct. You shouldn't keep doing it. Because he gives us the ability of what? He gives us the ability of what? Free will? That nasty eight-letter word? He gives you the ability of free will to make choices. So it's our choice whether or not if we keep doing something that we did in our past, but Jesus is not going to come back and remind you of it. 
Now, he may put some discomfort on you. You ever gotten that guilty feeling before? Uh Uh-huh, there you go. But he's not rubbing it in your face. In the book of John 3.17, it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but he came to save the world through him. Come on. You know what? He's not here to take you like a dog that went, went wee-wee on the floor and rub your nose in it. That's not why he's here. He forgives you of your sins and then he moves on. Then he allows you to open yourself up to the Holy Spirit to allow the Holy Spirit to come start working through you and start changing you. You know, I remember growing up as a kid, one of my favorite toys, and I'm going to show my age here, and this, some of y'all might be able, older folk here might be able to relate to this with me. Remember Etch-A-Sketches? Mm-hmm. Remember an Etch-A-Sketch? Man, Etch-A-Sketch was cool. Because right. remember how I would already talked about, like, you're doing a project, you get halfway through, yeah. and you look at it, like, man, I need to start over somehow. But well, that was cool with an Etch-A-Sketch, because that's what, you, you got the little red thing with the two knobs, man, and you're swiggling around there. This is looking pretty good. And all of a sudden you're like, oops, well, guess what? With an Etch-a-Sketch, Etch-a-Sketch is kind of like, like Jesus. You can shake it up and make it go away. Well, Christ, you can ask for forgiveness of your sins. And they go away. Doesn't mean that Satan can't come along later and tempt you, though. Because Satan's the tempter. Satan is the destroyer. But remember, when you messed up, you just shake it up, you start all over. The slate, that silver slate was wiped clean. That's how your sins are with Jesus. Your slate is wiped clean. The Bible says that God has the ability because of the sacrifice of his son, his death, his resurrection, to take all the messes, take all the sins, take all the regrets of your life and just completely wipe them out. That happens that very moment when we trust him alone to be our savior. You have, you have, you have I'm not going to get into a lot of detail here because that's part of my sermon next week. But you have to ask He freely gives it, but you have to ask for it. It's kind of like going to a store and buying something. A store has stuff there. They want to freely give it to you at a cost, right? It costs us something. Same way with being a sinner. Jesus is ready to forgive us about everything that we've done in our past. He's ready. But we have to show up. We have to ask for forgiveness. Is there a cost? Absolutely. What was the cost? His dying and being resurrected was the cost. Romans 8.1 says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. See, when Jesus died on the cross, one of the last things that he said from the cross was what? It is finished. In the Greek, let me tell you what those words mean in the Greek. Ready? Doesn't mean it is finished. In the Greek, it means paid in full. Never heard it that way, have you? That's what it means, paid in full. 
When Jesus died on the cross and he was resurrected in three days, our junk, our garbage that we tend to like to walk around with all the time has been paid in full once we ask for forgiveness. It's finished. God says that what Jesus did on the cross, he paid for every sin you've ever committed. He stomps it out. He stamps it paid in full, just like making that last car payment paid in full. And then there's no condemnation behind it. In other words, he doesn't remember it. But see, also, it's the power to give us a new identity. Huh? Come on. It's the power to give you a new identity. What's identity? Identity defines who you are. Some of us walk around with secret identities. Hmm. How about that? Superman had a secret identity. But guess what? We all have our kryptonite. We all have our weakness. See, in our culture, we defined ourselves by race, our religion, political party. In today's world, sexual orientation, unfortunately our gender some of us find our identity through our occupation or our, our hobbies or, or maybe we, where you went to school I went to Yale that's where I get my identity from you're not better than me I went to Yale I didn't go to Yale I went to community college <laughs> <laughs> Does he do that? I went to Yale. That's the first. That's the first thing you put on your on your resume. I went to Yale. <laughs> but see, identities are so much about what we do or what we've done. our successes and our failures. Maybe what others have done to us. But see, the resurrection brings the power to change all of that. See, because Jesus conquered sin, we don't have to define ourselves any longer. Especially by our sinful failures our past mistakes or even what others think about us you ever, does that bother you what people think about you mm -hmm. in my, my stage of life I don't care anymore <laughs> and my wife you know, I, I lost a tooth here a few days ago and I, I kind of look like somebody from Arkansas <laughs> <laughs> She goes, you really need to get that tooth fixed. You know, you look like, like Billy Bob from Arkansas. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you know, in, the, in my stage of life, guess what? I don't care what people think about me. I just talk like this. Wait, how did you lose it? Huh? She hit me. I'm just kidding. It was just a bad tooth and it broke. I'm just kidding. I probably deserved it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but see, when we come to God, come on now, when we come to God and we put our faith in Jesus, Christ alone becomes our cornerstone. Christ alone becomes our personal Savior. We receive that gift from Him. He tells us in John 1, 12, says, Yet to all who did receive Him, to those who believed in His name he gave the right to become what children of God 
Guess what? Even more importantly, now you, you can identify now because guess what? Now you're an heir to the throne. How about that? There's an identity for you. We are children. If you know Jesus as Lord and Savior, we are children of God. Out of his grace. He's adopted us into his family. And he says, what? Call me father. That's your new identity. He says, you are my child. I'm your daddy. Not the baby daddy, but you're my, you're my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I am his and he is what? Mine. Now you might think, well, how do you all know that's true? But it tells us in 2 Corinthians, set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. Sets our seal upon us. So we've been branded. We've been set apart. It means that whatever image that we have of ourselves before, we can set ourselves on the new image that God has created within us and given us. See, when you're a child of God, once you, that, that moment you sit there and say, forgive me of my sins, guess what? You're not defined by your feelings. You're not defined by the opinions of others or by the circumstances that you're involved in. You're not defined by your successes. You're not defined by your failures. You're definitely not defined by the car you drive or the money that you have. or the house that you own. But you're defined by God and the God alone. He identifies you as his own. Cut clear and dry. No exceptions. And because of the power of the resurrection, you are now identified with Christ. And once you identify with Christ, here's the fun part. This is the, this, the, 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 the extra benefit you get is the power of the Holy Spirit is within you. And that gives you that new identity. See, here's one of the most powerful truths that you will ever hear about Jesus is we are not only saved by his death, but we are also saved by his life. That means that a risen Christ, a risen Jesus, lives inside of us by his Holy Spirit. It, once you say, forgive me, it's there. His divinity inhabits your humanity. How about that? That means you can face each day in the strength of a risen Savior. Amen. Regardless of what happens to you, whatever difficulties you might face, whatever curveball that the world may throw at you, you have the power to stand in there and face it head on. Galatians chapter 2 says, I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Think of the prospect of having a risen Jesus living inside of you, not just living inside you, but living his life through you. Because that's what it entails. He's not just living inside you. He is living his life through you. Through what? His spirit.
See, here's something I've learned about life, and maybe some of y'all might have learned this about life also, but guess what? It's unpredictable. Yeah? See, one minute feels like, man, we're just sailing along and everything's just going fine and dandy. And then the next moment we find ourselves dealing with a crisis. And it makes us sit back and th think about, well, how in the world can we face these twists and turns? These roadblocks, these speed bumps. Sometimes life-altering dead ends. Here's how it's through the Holy Spirit. Again, the Apostle Paul says, And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. Because of what? Of the Spirit that lives in you. Sorry for going so long. I'm about ready to wrap up here. See, that means that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, the one who was involved in the creation, guess what? That was involved in the creation. The same one that came upon the disciples during Pentecost. Came upon them like what? Mighty rushing wind. The one who raised Jesus Christ from the dead, guess what? Is giving you something daily through you. Amen. See, we all go through tragedies in our lives. I, I know I've gone through my share. It could be illness, fi financial, setbacks, broken relationship, divorces. The list goes on and on and on. But think about this, if Jesus would not have been risen from the dead, then we would never have the power to deal with what we have to deal with. Because Jesus rose from the dead and conquered the grave, he gives us sustaining grace. In other words, sustaining favor. And that carries us through those twists and turns in life. See, the Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors through him. Come on. And that there's nothing that can defeat us. It may get tough. and I'm not saying it's not going to get tough. I'm not going to sit here and, say, and tell you you're not going to be persecuted against because the scripture, Jesus even said that we're going to be persecuted as children of the most high God. But in Romans it continues to say, for I am convinced that neither death or nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from what? The love of God. How can that be? It's because we serve a resurrected Savior who still operates under, guess what? The resurrection power. And most importantly, he promises to fill you with the same power to give you strength to face the challenges of each day. I want to pose you with a question was what does that resurrection power mean to you today ponder on that a little bit chew on that what's it mean to you today some people said well that's just something that happened in the past but those of us who, who have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior we sit back and say that gives us the ability to keep on keeping on to live for him to spread the good news You know, I had the opportunity when I was stationed in the Middle East, I had the opportunity to go to the tomb. And guess what? Nobody was home. Nobody was there. It's empty. 
Christ is alive. And for watching online, if you're here today, maybe some of you are desperate to make a change in your life. Maybe you're just getting tired of, of your past and your hang-ups and, and whatever it might be. He's alive. He's risen for you. You just have to ask. Some of us just need to sit back and just need to do a reaffirmation of saying, just Jesus, forgive me of what I've done. Forgive me of what may happen in the future. Some of us need to be there. I pray for forgiveness every day because you know what? I've fallen and come short of the glory of God. We live in a sinful world. But most importantly, with Christ, you don't have to do it alone. Come on. You don't have to do it alone. Because you know what? You can't do it by yourself. If you think you can do it by yourself, you're going to continue to stay in the same hang-ups that you're going through in the past. It's going to keep sprouting itself. Satan will use it against you every chance he gets. You don't have the power to do it on your own. We're made to depend on Jesus. We're made to have that fellowship with him. We're made to call God our father, our daddy. It's time to let go of your past failures. It's time to let go of your past mistakes. Amen. And I guarantee probably every person here today still hangs on to them in some way, shape, or form. But it's time to let go. Christ offers forgiveness. He promises to cancel them out. He promises to wipe them off the record. He offers you an opportunity to start over. Not going to be easy, but the opportunity is there. I want to give you this one last thought. Is the re Hear me now. The resurrection means that no situation is too hopeless. No situation is too hopeless. No problem is too big for Christ. Here's something for you. Until, instead of telling God how big your problem is that you're going through, guess what? How about telling your problem how big your God is? Huh? Huh? Stop telling God how big your problem is. Tell your problem big how big my God is. He's still in the resurrection business. He's still in the business of saving lives. And guess what? He's still in the business of changing. If you're watching online, he's still in the business of changing your lives out there. He's still in the business of changing lives here today. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for the resurrection power of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you that we have someone that we can go to and, and, and just put it all out in front of us and give it to him. We thank you that he sits there and he takes our debts and he cancels them out. He takes our sins, he cancels them. He takes our past, his, our past and he cancels it. And he gives us a new life. He gives us a new way. He gives us the, to, the ability to become heirs to the throne of God. And we just thank you for that, Lord. People, if you're watching online today, if you're here today, we're just going to do a reaffirmation of our walk with Christ. So I want everybody just to follow along with me. You can repeat after me. If you're watching online, repeat after me. But just simply say, I do believe, I do believe that, Jesus is the Lord. that Jesus is the Lord. He's a son of living God. And I accept him, and I accept him as, my Lord and Savior. as my Lord and Savior. 
if you did that and you meant that from the bottoms of your heart, and you're not just doing it for the pastor, you're not just doing it for the people here, but if you did that from the bottom of heart, guess what? Welcome to the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 We're going to close in song.